Hello everybody, Geosnow here. So in today's video we're going to take a look at the Unicorn Crack Me program and we're going to crack it in order to accept any serial number and any username that we provide to it. So this is a Crack Me which is a pretty much an exercise for hackers, for beginner hackers to get into the field and we're going to unpack it and see how it looks like. So it has been created to work on macOS and it looks like this. We open it and it has a standard name and serial field in here. So we can complete it with George and some random numbers and it's going to tell us error, the serial number is not valid. Now what you need to do is to pretty much either create a key gen and you know reverse engineer the algorithm used to generate the correct serial numbers and of course create a key generator to generate valid serial numbers or you can patch the program to no longer check whether the serial number is correct or not. And in this way, it will pretty much show the success scenario every time you press validate. This is what we're going to do. So this is a macOS program. In this case, you need to have a macOS computer in order to do this challenge. And in order to do that, you either have a Mac or you create a virtual box with macOS, or you can create a Hackintosh, which is a Windows computer running macOS. Now, that's up to you. But anyways, we're going to take a look at the program structure. Since this is a macOS program, it's coming in the .app format. Now, you would be tempted to believe that it's the same thing as on Windows, where you have the .exe as the general binary of the program. Well, in this case, it's not holding true. You have a folder in here that you can actually open with show package contents, and it contains another folder inside with other folders. And in the macOS folder, you have the actual binary, this is the actual binary of the uh, program. Now we're going to do some reverse engineering on that binary and we're going to patch it. In order to patch it, I'm going to use a disassembler and in my case it's IDA Pro. And then of course we're going to also use the terminal and the strings command because I want to show you how you can identify some important clues in the program. So I'm going to do that first. We're going to open the terminal and of course internally here I'm going to employ the strings command which is available on both Linux and Mac OS. Probably it's available on other akin to that platforms, but I don't know. Anyways, the strings will pretty much show you every ASCII character strings inside your program. So we're going to paste it in here. And as you can see, these are all the strings available in the program. Now, if you're a trained programmer in Objective-C and of course Mac OS and iOS platform, you probably already spotted a few Objective-C related stuff. For example, NS text field or NS window or I don't know, NS object and so on. These are specific to the Objective-C language. And if you do not program in it, you probably didn't spot them right away but these are an indicator that the program has been created in Objective-C. Now, we're not interested in all this gunk in here. What we are interested in though, is this part in here, which is human readable. A lot of beginners make this mistake to get lost in all this sea of text in here, but really, you should really concentrate on what you can understand. You're like making a puzzle in here and you're concentrating on the pieces that make sense and you start to put them together until you can add more to them to form the entire image. So you can see we have try again, we have the serial number is not valid, we have error, the serial is valid and success. So we know that there are two scenarios by looking at the strings in here. One that will say the serial is not valid and we already saw that. And of course the uh, next one, which is the serial is valid, which is of course our target. Now we're going to open this in IDA Pro. Okay, so this is how it looks like. We open IDA Pro and it's in here, load file and it's called unicorn s. Pretty much IDA Pro asks us if we want to open it as a fat Maco file for uh, the x86 platform or we want it for the power pc platform now what this means well this means that the unicorn file is actually a fat file containing two different architectures for which this application can perform the first one is a standard 32-bit intel program and the second one is for power pc cpus that were used by apple back on like the ibook era and so on so it predates the intel cpus on the mac os machines we're going to use the intel x86 platform here so we're pretty much going to press this button and then the processor type will of course be meta pc which means that will disassemble all the opcodes so i'm assuming that you do have a little bit of assembly knowledge in here and mm. I'm going to pretty much show you what you need to do. 
So you have these in here, which generated the, uh, the graph with this function in here, which appears to be the main function. Anyways, what we want to do is to locate functions of interest. The functions are presented in here. And you can see that we have a couple that are called uh, different names in here. Let me show you. Uh, the first one is called application that finished launching, which is a Objective-C standard function. We're not interested in that right now. We have window, set window, which are again, typical to Objective-C. Awake from nib, which is again, typical to Objective-C. Then we find the MD5 hex hash in here, which hints to the fact that the um, serial number is actually calculated using MD5, but we're not going to tackle that in this video. And then we have validate and validate serial for name. We're going to take a look at validate since it looks a little bit intriguing. Now, if you take a look in here, this is the entire function body and these are the branches. Now, if you look in here, you find a lot of important stuff, but when you're a beginner and you're first dealing with assembly, this may look like a myriad of text that you cannot understand. But do not worry, you do not have to understand anything on this page. Just the important stuff, just the flow of the program. So we have calls, which call various functions. We have test, which is a comparison. And we have GNZ in here, which means jump, if not zero. Now, of course, depending on the platform for which you're disassembling, being that uh, x86, being 64-bit, uh, it can be ARM or ARM64, it can be MIPS, it can be anything. So the assembly will be different. But in this case, in this particular case, it's 32-bit. So every Intel 32-bit program will have the same mnemonics in here with push, move, sub, and so on in this format in here. Now, what we're interested in is the flow of the program. If you take a look in here, we have the um, initial part of five or so uh, instructions in here with push EBP, move EBP ESP, sub ESP 38H, which are called the uh, function prolog. And this pretty much sets up the stack and passes the variables and so on. We're not interested in that for the moment, but you should keep in mind that any function in assembly has a function prologue. Now, if you take a look in here, we start to look into the way the program works. And if you navigate to here at the end of the uh, block, you can see that we have a test. Now, this test in here is used for comparison. We use ALAL. And of course, we have a jump if not zero. Now, this jump if not zero is called a conditional jump. Now, uh, it's called conditional because there is a condition that will determine whether the jump will occur or not. So you can see here we have jump if not zero. And if it jumps, we're going to go to location 2B6E, which if you take a look in here is this location in here. This is where we're going to go. But for the moment, we do not know what's in there. And this one is again, another one. There's a very good thing in IDA Pro that you have the uh, green and the red arrows, which pretty much give a hint to whether it's a success scenario or a failure scenario. But we're going to assume that we do not know that for the moment. So you can see that we have jump if not zero. Okay, so it goes in here if it's not zero. So let's see what's in here. We have a couple of moves and we have this very intriguing number in here, 30848. But if you put your mouse on them, you can actually see it says OK. Then if you put the mouse on the next one, it says the serial is valid. And again, if you put the mouse in here, it's a success. So now we know that this is a success scenario. Now, if you take a look in here, it says uh, try again. Then if you take a look in here, it says the serial is not valid. And of course, if you take a look in here, it says error. So now we know that this is the failure scenario and this is of course the success scenario. We can press in here and rename this one to success. Okay. And we can uh, pretty much rename this one to fail so that we can recognize them and of course know what is what. So now we know that it will jump to the success scenario in this case, or will continue, because as you can see, there is no jump in here for this one. For this one, for the success scenario, there is a jump, jump if not zero. And it means jump if the result of this test in here is not zero. But in this case, there is absolutely no jump. It will go straight through. Okay, so what we want to patch in this case is this jump if not zero. We want to make it a jump no matter what. You can see here, we have another jump into this fail scenario, which is jump and goes to this location in here, which, yeah, it's pretty much the uh, run alert panel, which is again specific to Objective-C. 
But anyways, this jump, GMP, is called an unconditional jump because there is no condition that will create that jump. When the CPU hits this jump in here, it will jump no matter what, while in this case, when it hits this jump if not zero, the result of the previous test instruction is actually very important. It will jump only depending on that. And this is why it's important to remember this stuff. So what we want to do is to transform this jump if not zero into an unconditional jump that will jump to the success scenario no matter what. In order to do that, we simply go in here. We select the jump and see what is the opcode for that. So we're going to press with the jump selected, we're going to press hex view. And as you can see, the selected stuff in here is EB27. Okay, so we have the EB. We know that EB is the actual hex opcode for the jump. And if we go here on the GNZ and select it and go here, we know that it's 75. So what I have to do is to right click in here with this selected, press edit, and instead of 75, I'm going to say EB. So I'm transforming the GNZ into a GMP. Now I'm going to press right click, uh, apply changes. And what you can see, it has transformed the GNZ into a GMP. So now there is no longer any branch to this in here because this one is now ignored. So we're only going to have a success scenario. Now that we did the patching, it will only go to this portion in here. Now in order to save this, we go to edit, we're going to go here to patch program apply patches to the input file, and of course, we're going to press OK. We're not going to create a backup, although it's um, a good thing to do. And I'm going to close this up in here. I'm not going to pack any databases, and we should be out. So now I'm going to go here on the packages. I'm going to go to contents, Mac OS, put the file in here, and let's see what happens. I'm going to open the program, and I'm going to say George, and some random stuff, like whatever, and I'm going to press validate. Whoa! Success! The serial is valid. Let's copy the George from here and press in here. So it's going to be George, George. There you go. Success! The serial is valid. Let's say uh, GH, GH, and so on. As you can see, the serial is valid. So we patched the program, and now whenever we start the program, it's going to be patched and it's going to allow any serial number to be um, specified in here. Like this success, the serial is valid. And this is how you tackle this unicorn app. Now I have actually created an automated patcher in C that can attack this unicorn crack me. You can find the crack me here in the description down below, of course, in my explanation here on GitHub. But here on my GeoSnow profile on GitHub, you can find the code that will pretty much create a tool that will patch all these automatically. And you can take a look in here. But anyways, I'm going to talk about this program and how you can create it yourself in the next video. Thank you for watching.